Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We're doing some social distancing. Yeah, where are you at? I don't even see you next to me. What's going on? I'm at home with Jack Daniels, number 27. Woo! We're going testing! I'm hoping COVID-19's almost over, brother. High five. Boom! Oh, up too far. Up. There we go. Got a hand sanitizer. <laughs> All right. So you pre poured a sample for me a while ago. Well, of course, because, of because of COVID, we're in the midst of that and social distancing. Yeah, we've poured some samples back and forth. We've been doing a few reviews like this. I kind of like it. It's actually pretty handy. Um, and I don't have to drive anywhere after uh, we've done a couple reviews. But that part's a pinch, but I miss having you here, bro. Yeah, that is different, but. Uh, it's pretty convenient, I got to say. So, a, a, a lot, yes. do what? It's technically very convenient. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I so, wish it was 1080p. Yeah. And I need to figure out OBS and do that. But anyway, a while back, a co worker uh, bought me Jack Daniels number 27. Who? This is. Used to be only available in Tennessee, which is when he bought it. It was a couple years ago. It is, so it's Jack Daniels. It's extra, it's double mellowed and double uh, barreled. So they've, uh, it's got an extra maturation in maple barrels mm. and it's twice charcoal filtered, Good. Which, which I can't remember what gentleman Jack is. If it's twice charcoal filtered or thrice Oh, I'm so thrilled you said thrice. <laughs> I've been trying to use thrice whenever possible. Yeah. I haven't had somebody say you made it up. I go, that's how they used to talk, dude. And then twice, thrice. <laughs> I about said trice. Yeah, I said that twice and tried to thrice. Yes. Thrice, my friend. Mellow so, thrice. Uh, bottled at 40%, which we'll see how it does here. Not sure about that. Nope. But it smells very honeyed. Yeah, a honey sweetness is exactly what I was going to say. That charcoal, of course. Yeah, and hints of vanilla. Which we had yeah. someone someone ticked off on us on a comment a while back when we said we got charcoal in a, uh, I think it was a Dickel product. Because they said that uh, charcoal, there was not charcoal. Uh, we didn't know anything. We were dumb. And blah, blah, blah. You remember that one? We called it out. We talked about it on a show. I remember. First of all, we always steer into dumb. <laughs> so we don't shy away. We don't steer. It's like steering into the skid. I still no. get shark. I mean, I, I would still say I get that just a waft of um, of charcoal. You're dumping the charcoal into the, uh, the barbecue pit and just a waft of, or maybe even a burning the ash, charcoal ash type note. I would agree with you. It's not heavy, but it's... Well, I like that when you're dumping the the last part of the bag of the brisk briquettes. Yeah, and I think for the first time with Jack Daniels, I just got a banana. Huh? I know you've gotten that before with some Jack Daniels products. I don't know if I ever have. I get it with the uh, what we call the double barrel, which is the Jack Daniels barrel proof. Right? No, I always get the name wrong. Double. Single barrel, Single barrel, barrel, barrel proof, which we call the double barrel. I've called it double barrel so long, can't call it by its real name. Now you got to remember, just look at the uh, look at the camera, Bart. Don't be looking at the monitor down below it. Dang We're it. Not live. So people people got to see us looking them in the eye. Got an eyeball. Yeah, no, I want to look at you. I know. I've noticed that in the last couple of reviews we did, we were spending too much time looking at the monitor instead of the people watching. That's a good point. It's hard to get used to again. Usually we don't even we don't even film with a view of ourselves present anymore. Yeah, I know it. Yep. All right. Okay. Going in. I took a taste. I get a butterscotch Brock's candy. 
but drier than that. Not quite as sweet as I thought it was going to be either. That honey sweetness, is there the same one you get on the nose? This is almost like a, uh, say you took a Balvenie, a single malt scotch, and you charcoal filtered it. It's that same kind of honey sweetness. First of all, you just made somebody throw something at the screen. <laughs> even, even the suggestion. Yeah. <laughs> you want to get a bunch of views, take a Balvany Ton 1509 no, no. charcoal filter it, and boy, we'll get some hate on that. <laughs> Holy moly. Dude. But the Balvany brings kind of a honey sweetness to yeah, it. Yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. It just made me think of you taking your Ton 1509 and running mm -hmm. it through a charcoal filter. Whew. We'd have to be rich. <laughs> now, this is labeled as well, Tennessee whiskey. Of course, coming from Jack Daniels. I'm going to tell okay, for 40%, it has a really nice mouthfeel. It's a, this is a very enjoyable whiskey. Cinnamons, smooth car melted caramels. Yes, yes. That honey sweetness. I don't pick up any rye notes at all. Not really any spiciness to it. I agree. It's mostly that caramel forefront. It's like a caramel that's drizzled over an ice cream. Here's the thing, though. It's a little more astringent or dry. A little more dry than I, or astringent than I thought it would be. Which okay. turns towards the caramel. But I'm not liking the dryness quite as much. Not I'm going to add a drop drop of water, even though it's 40%. And really, I really enjoy it neat. So. I do not I did not prep my water dropper. Ah. Nor do I have my water bottle handy to cap it. <laughs> so I am sporting a little bit of a Christmas dummy. Hello, we got the snowfall. And on either this show or another one, I need to tell the tale of me playing fireman. <laughs> so, well, tell us, see, since, since we're talking fire and smoke and charcoal, you might as well let's score it. All right. And talk it. And anybody that wants to bail out can bail out before the, the fireman store. It says it's fresh on your mind. And it's fresh, baby. All right. Um, I really, I, I really enjoy this. Now, when I first cracked it, I kind of thought, okay, a little overhyped. Uh, didn't necessarily think it was going to be worth the money, but uh, I've had it since and sitting here tonight, really enjoying it. I think it's quite a bit better than the standard uh, Jack number seven. Well, yes, yes. And I'm actually, I'll, I'll, I'll give this a, I'm debating between a 90 and a 91. It, it, no, I'll give, I'm going to go 90. It, it's breaching the, the 90 markets into the good whiskey category. That 40% though was hindering it. I think if this was even 45%, it would be say 46 because their Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof is unbelievable. And its price point is $40 less than this. Uh, no, it's even less than that. This is this is a hundred dollars. Okay, but I was seeing. Well, I guess I haven't looked, didn't it? Okay, so Jack, it's not sixty. Jack is, Jack is twenty dollars. Oh, the double barrel. Yeah, the double barrel oh, sixty, the, isn't it? Yeah, the double barrel. I thought you meant just Jack number seven. Jack mm. number seven is twenty dollars a bottle. I'm talking the double barrel. Yeah, the single barrel barrel proof sixty three, sixty four percent. What sixty two? Right in there unbelievable bursting with flavor this is smoother it's more approachable for somebody that doesn't isn't used to drinking it neat high proof it's smooth it's sweet but 88 that price point is too high um it's i love the sweetness in it it's a little drier than i would like it and i'm not sure what's doing that at this lower proof Real quick, grab. I know you've got a Jack number seven. Grab one because I believe it's forty three percent. 
Uh, I did look up online though. Jack number seven is 40% as well. I was thinking it was 43% and why would they bottle this at 40? Uh, but Jack, and I think there are some variations of this Jack number seven, the special editions that they do. They come out with a little bit higher proof, uh, but the standard number seven is 40%. This one's really nice mouthfeel. I really like it. Uh, you know, it's a hundred dollars, maybe $110 depending on where you're at. It's, um, I mean, if you want to try something different, yeah, it's, and, and and you want to spend that much money, it's good. If I bought one of these, I probably wouldn't buy another one. I would enjoy the bottle or the bottle that I bought. Now, this one was gifted to me from a friend, so but oh I, don't know that I, would, I don't know that I would regret spending you know a hundred dollars on it. Some some of the caramels remind me of um of the uh, Jameson Black Barrel. Mm. That's where the caramels kind of hit me there, but not as smooth. Um, I would not buy it at this price, uh, but if you're a Jack aficionado, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah. it's a sipper. It's a great slow sipper. Yeah. Very so good. Saturday here in Dudaw, here in Wichita. Now, wait a minute. Let me preface this because I have not heard this story yet either. I've seen the pictures, but I haven't heard – what happened? <laughs> so it was a beautiful, beautiful day. I'm going to get these pictures ready so that when it's time, I can I can show how things went here. Um, so nice outside. It was go out and mow for the first time. And I've got a Bermuda grass that uh, greens up late. And so I needed to go kind of... Uh, mow it down a little bit, get it ready. Um, I was getting the stuff ready, taking care of a lot of yard stuff out there all day. And um, I had this, uh, I had some like junk wood that I needed to just saw up, get it all, get it all out of the way. So I did all that. It was pretty wore out. Went over to the fire pit. You guys seen the fire pit on the 12 hours. Boom. It's our favorite place to go. So I use it as both a berm pit and just a relaxing fire pit. The wind was out of the south to the north, and it was a little heavy, but it wasn't too bad. Got my stuff in there going, got everything ready, figured I'll get her going, maybe even sit down and just relax for a little bit. A gust of wind came up. Whew. Next thing you know, I got grass on fire. And I was like, ooh, snikes. What's, like, what's, what's, what's the time frame here? What's the What's the – uh, fire started and then you realize it's out of control. Um, well, I'll give it to you. So the, the fire, the grass pops on the, on the North side of my pit, which has a ring of concrete around it as well. Pretty good, like four feet. And I thought I'd be good, but <laughs> turns out it's so dry and that I just mowed it. I have a feeling that it was, it made it even more susceptible maybe. And I see it go about, it spreads to about a foot as I even kind of look at it. I'm like, oh, snikes. Well, one of the junk pieces I had was this old, like, uh, half door off of an entertainment center that I was going to throw in. And I thought, I'll smother it out real quick. And uh, I throw it on the, uh, on the burning patch and immediately, poof, and then the fire breaks out from around it and starts to spread in like a pie-shaped formation. I'm like, dang it, I need some water. And I was an idiot and did not prep the hose and have it ready. <laughs> so I run over to my spigot, grab a bucket, get about a gallon in there, and I run back, and the fire's already progressed about 10 feet. And I'm like, oh, my God, this could be a problem. And I chuck the water on it. It does nothing. And I realize I'm going to need help. So I... I burst upstairs, open the door, yell, I need help. And I hear, I'm cleaning the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really need help. Yeah. So I go, I go, the yard's on fire. The yard's on fire, fire, fire. I'm pretty much hitting panic mode at this point in time. I hear like a yelling and then I bail and I run to my shop and I grab, I organized all the hoses and I could only find one set because that's how well organized. Turns out the other ones were on a nice shelf somewhere that I couldn't find in the heat of what 
even my 13 year old says was a level of panic, which I don't pride myself in. I usually don't panic. <laughs> Get the hose, hook the hose up. I that backyard, anybody seen 12 hours of boom? It's pretty big. I'm willing the hose out and I can only get to what is now 40 feet of fire and I can only get to a corner. Let's see like, the pictures while you're describing it. I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so I end up, this is what you'll see there. there <laughs> there's the fire pit that has extended it, it, quite that- some. Is that a swing set? Is that a play set in there? Oh, my God. It wasn't there yet, but it was headed toward the play set. Here's the – I had to take two pictures to get the full width of this bad boy in the area here. You can see where I beat back some of the fire. You can even see that one little blonde patch. That's where the first bucket of water went is marching out and I'm I'm like oh my god I'm going to catch like the farmer's field even on fire. <laughs> I didn't think any homes were going to be in too much danger but it was still in doubt. So then my wife shows up with another probably 60 feet of hose. I hook that up and my neighbor and another neighbor five down happens to see the fire. They come over and start running hose from the east end and now we start battling this bad boy but it's still running crazy so i finally turned to liz and i go go ahead and call 911 and call the fire department because i'm not sure we can get this bo brings out yet another set of hose um he hooks it up to the wrong spigot then he gets it to me but he brings me the uh to this day i don't think he knows what i told him he brought me the mail end to screw into the male end. I'm like, give me the female end. (laughs) And this is what my dad used to call them. I don't even, that's probably not even like politically correct, but he's like, what? I go the other end and he runs and gets it. And then I get that. Now we're in business. As I'm starting to get it under control, here comes a ladder truck, a pumper and a squad into my cul-de-sac. I'm like, Oh my God. (laughs) My neighbor buddy comes over who's a fireman. He's got his wife with him. He's like, well, I think you got it under control now. I said, oh, yeah. (laughs) He says, well, you got Bermuda. This is going to look great after the burn patch goes away. He goes, you you don't know how good this is going to look. I said, man, I'm going to get yelled at. It turns out it was... It was not hot enough to catch the swing set on fire. I did have a spigot with my uh, with my sprinkler system, which had not been primed yet. That would have been helpful. It it PVC pipe turns out goes limp pretty quick. That was an easy hack that off, hack it off, get a joiner, and I fixed that already. Oh my God! And then the other neighbors, you know, I've got a neighbor next to me who's an engineer, so he just looked at me with disdain. He had a tip. He's like, you know, when we run a fire pit, I always have a hose out there ready to go. A good idea. Thanks, yeah. thanks for the news flash there. Yeah, thanks for the help. Yeah, I'll even pre-wet the area around. It. Boom, I'll be doing that henceforth as well. Some great advice. Thank yeah. you. And then I love the firemen that show up because everything's under control and they're more like irritated that they even had to come. <laughs> You know, because I mean, they're used to. They're like, "This is it." You know, I'm starting to call uh, it Saturday on. afternoon too. They probably had the, uh, you know, they had charcoal going in the grill. True. And ready I to, probably messed up like a steak dinner and them throwing a football around. Dinner. You bet you. Who knows what they're doing during COVID? <laughs> yeah, so I got to play fireman, <laughs> and uh, oh my god, it was. Uh, the neighbors were pretty good about it, but ooh, I told them once everything's done and everything looks good again. Uh, hopefully we'll be through the COVID. I'll have them over to the fire pit and I'll pour whiskey for free. But at least it blew away from your house, really. Yeah, well, I knew that. Even when I started, I thought, well, the wind's up a little bit, but everything's to the north. So worst case scenario, it's going to go to the field. And then I even found out post-blaze, when it hit my neighbor to the east yard, his is all fescue and it's super green. It hit it and stopped. It literally burned down his my line. And then when it was hitting the farmer's field, it was all green. I don't know what he's got in it. And it stopped. 
Well, I had this picture like 20 foot field blazes or so. I mean, there's no homes that would have hit a road before it hit a house, but I was like, Oh my God, <laughs> there's nothing worse than when you lose the, you, when you lose to fire, it's bad. When you lose the control that you normally have over fire, it's, I didn't like it. I didn't, man, it was marching, dude. It was, I thought I could handle it and it was poof. It was out of control in no time. Huh. Mm. All right. So tip number one is always keep a primed hose next to your fire pit. So says the neighbor. So say we all. Scotch it, <laughs> you scotch gods. Salancha. Dummy. Dummy. I think you said that in the singular.